Well, there was some interest in my ATCS monitoring setup. So I thought I would, uh, I'm sitting here in between a few trains. Um, trains coming at me in two, di two directions, but they'll be a little while. Um, so here is, uh, I would say, uh, there's probably two major parts to the system, this being the first. This is a um, PC computer. Uh, in this case, this is a, a netbook, which is a small PC running Windows XP. It's running the ATCS Mon program that you can download off the web. I'm using what's called the BNSF Galveston Subdivision North Kit, which includes that map and all the signal indication decodings for me. So there's actually very little work to do here. Someone's already done the decoding work for me and included a map. So this makes actually capturing images and, and uh, showing people very easy. Uh, some of the other subdivisions around here um, have not been decoded and there are no maps. On the side of the netbook, you see the two most important um, external interfaces. The black wire at the bottom is actually plugged into the microphone jack and it is the um, broadband audio feed coming from the radio. The USB jack is actually going to an RS-232 uh, to USB converter. Uh, the RS-232 is used to actually control the frequency and some of the other settings of my data radio. Uh, the black cord there is an audio cord which brings in broadband audio into the PC. The ATCS MON program um, processes the audio and pulls out signal indications. The data radio I've been using for my ATC ATCS monitoring is an ICOM IC dash PCR 1000 um, software controlled radio. The reason this is so valuable is this radio already has what's called a discriminator tap which is a broadband audio tap. You cannot use normal audio off of any radio. It must be from the discriminator which gives a um, much uh, higher spectrum audio source. The PCR 1000 has numerous uh, interfaces up at the top. Uh, starting on the very far left is the antenna. Uh, in this case we need a 900 megahertz range antenna. Uh, the next is the DC power supply, uh, 12 volts. Here I'm using it off of a uh, transformer through an inverter that I run in my car. Uh, the next one is for an external speaker, uh, which we do not use. We, we must use the uh, um, a connector further to the right. Uh, the next connector is RS-232, and that's for things such as um, changing the channel, changing the type of modulation, pretty much doing the entire control and configure of the radio. And finally, on the far right, uh, it says packet 9600 BPS. That's the discriminator tap on this radio and essentially that is the broadband audio feed that we put into the microphone jack on the PC. Uh, feed off that, uh, that broadband audio is what um, the program um, crunches on and produces the signal indications. The final piece is the external antenna. This is a simple magnetic mount uh, it's an NMO type magnetic mount with a simple whip antenna on it. I need to actually purchase a proper 900 megahertz antenna, 900 megahertz tuned antenna. I just haven't gotten around to this one. Uh, this one works pretty good uh, and I've just been living with it. The mount is a basic NMO mount. And that antenna whip unscrews off the mount and you can put other types of antennas on here. The mount is simply a, a block that um, magnetically attaches to the top of my vehicle and the mount um, 
antenna actually can be changed for whatever frequency band you need. Uh, I'll be playing with this a little bit more, uh, trying to get a better quality antenna. So far this one seems to work pretty good.